Hi everyone, I'm Kishara Tism and welcome, welcome to my channel, Kishara Creates. And I am a local artist um, in my hometown here in Rock Hill, South Carolina. I've been the resident artist at a local paint and sip art studio um, here for about four years now. And ever since last year when everything happened, I've kind of been missing the art studio because I have not had the art, the, excuse me, the opportunity to go in and instruct as much as I would like to. And I've really just been missing having the opportunity to share my creativity and instruction and all of that good stuff. So I thought, why not try YouTube and see how that goes? So um, today we are going to do a quick little painting. Um, it is my hope and goal for this channel that I can not only, you know, create beautiful pieces of art with you guys, but help you guys to develop your skills, help you to feel more comfortable, help you to know and see what you're actually capable of just by learning simple tips and techniques. Um, honestly, anyone has the potential of being able to become an incredible artist. All you have to do is practice and try and just want to. It really is just funny. Don't be afraid of it. It's just paint. So we're just going to get started. So since it is spring forward today, I thought it'd be very fitting to do a spring inspired painting. So um, especially for my first painting, I just want to do something that's fun and colorful and upbeat and, you know, joyful. So we're going to do a field of maybe some tulips or something of that nature. Um, I'm excited. So let's go ahead and get started. So I... Um, typically use majority, majority, excuse me, majority of the time, um, the primary colors, which are red, blue, yellow, and then I also use black and white as well. But today, as you can see, I have a nice array of colors. This is just gonna help me when it comes to mixing up colors and all of that fun stuff. So, we are going to get started with our background. And I'm going to use a, a one inch flat brush and it's called a flat brush because it has a flat edge to it. It's not rounded, it's not tapered. It just has a straight flat line. So I'm going to use my flat brush and I am going to do the background first. And then we're going to paint our flowers and everything on top of the background. Now, depending on the type of painting, um, you can either paint right over top of it or you might want to let it dry just a little bit. But for today, I think it would be safe to say that we should be fine to be able to just start painting. So I am not going to want to do just a plain blue um, background. So I like to either start at the top, the bottom, or the middle of the canvas. And today, um, since I kind of want to do a brighter blue kind of sky, I'm going to start with some purple up here. Um, and as you can see, I'm just kind of roughly putting it down. No rhyme or reason. This is just to get some color saturation onto the canvas, as you can see. And I might add a little bit of magenta in there as well, because I want this to have a good amount of color in it and rinse my brush off just a little bit and add go ahead and start adding in some of my blues so see i'm adding in some blue and some aquamarine or some teal a turquoise everyone interprets colors differently but as you can see i'm just kind of Laying the colors out, blending out the colors, layering them up so we can have a nice color variation and a nice beautiful sky. So, and as I, like I said, I'm just kind of laying out some color. Doesn't need to be perfect or anything like that because we are just laying out our background color. So I'm just getting some white and I'm just all down here going to put the white. And as you can see, I have not cleaned off my brush, so it still has the blue and the purple and all those lovely colors in there as well, which is exactly what I want. Now, you guys, make sure that you guys don't forget the sides of your canvas. 
even I sometimes have a hard time remembering that, but just a lot easier to try to go ahead and do it now instead of trying to remember or go back and achieve that later. So I kind of want to lighten this up up here some too. So I'm going to put a little bit of white up there. Um, a little bit more up here too. And go back in here with some of that darker blue. And see, I'm just putting down a nice kind of thick kind of coat or clumps or areas on the canvas because I'm going to go back with this brush once it's all and make sure it has a good amount of water in it. And you see how I'm kind of doing like this? I'm going to do that with a brush that's a little bit more saturated with water and it's going to help um, blend out the colors and blend out the background. But I want a little bit more white in here and up here too. Some turquoise up here as well. So see, there's no rhyme or reason really. We're really just mixing the background. So I just put a little bit of water on my brush and see how that's already starting to help that paint spread more even. And you see, I'm doing left to right or either right to left, but I'm doing, I'm painting in smooth strokes. I like, you can either do left to right, right to left or up and down. However, especially when you're doing your background, you want your strokes to be consistent. So, I might as well just pick up my water cup instead of keep trying to reach over there. So, as you can see, I'm not really putting any paint. I'm just using the water to kind of blend out what I already have going on. And you see how it starts to pick up all the colors. And acrylic dries really fast so when it comes to the background you kind of just want to keep it moving which was the reason why it kind of might have seemed like I just threw the colors down on there because I kind of did because I didn't want them to dry too much <laughs> so and you'll probably find in certain areas if it's a little too dry or if you want to blend it a little bit more then you might want to go back and add another coat but Add a little bit more paint up in here. If it starts to get like this and you're having a hard time with spreading it even with the water, then you want to add more paint. And to be honest, I didn't even pay attention to what color I picked up. I just picked up a color. I just want this background to be nice and blended. You're not even going to be able to see all this color variation. The background, because the canvas already comes with um, a texture coat on top of it, it's always typically takes a lot more paint or more color saturation just to put down the, the background than painting over top of everything else. This, in my opinion, usually seems to take the longest. And I prefer acrylic painting because it's a lot quicker than oil painting. See, I'm trying not to forget my top. Make sure I do my edges, all that fun stuff, especially on a painting like this where there's color variation and there's gradation. Um, make sure you do your edges. Uh, it'll be hard to go back on the sides and have touches of purple here and touches of teal here and so on so on and so on so paint your sides as you go paint your sides as you go now when you're doing this technique when you're kind of thinning out your paint if you notice that you're getting water that's dripping down the canvas then that means that you have way too much water in your brush and you're going to want to um wipe your brush off a little bit on a paper towel or on a cloth or something along those lines so as you can see i'm still just kind of using the water on my brush i added a little bit of blue here or there but 
really. We're just going to keep on smoothing out the background. Right now, I'm more so making sure there's not any white spaces on the canvas that everything at least has some color or some paint on it. And then I'm going to go back and smooth everything out because believe it or not, that's still not smooth enough. I want it smoother than that. Um, painting takes patience. It really does. A lot of the times um, you have to paint in layers. Sometimes it takes more than one coat to do things. Um, I like to speed up the process sometimes by using a blow dryer or something like that to paint in between layers. That way I don't have to wait just for it to dry. Um, the good thing about acrylics though is that it does not take a long time to dry. So if you don't have a blow dryer, if you don't feel like doing that, you can just wait 10, maybe 15, 20 minutes and just go back over top of it. There we go. Starting to do what I wanted to do. Make sure. I know I'm probably all in front of the canvas. I mean, in front of the camera, but hey, I gotta make sure I get it all. There we go. I needed a little bit of paint right there anyway, so that worked out. And see, don't be afraid, just kind of paint, paint, paint. It's not anything that has to be any kind of certain way. And I always say, when you like how something looks, stop. Once you get satisfied with how it's looking, then stop. But as of right now, I like the way that the colors are laid out. So I'm just going to kind of... Do nice smooth strokes so I can blend everything out. Actually, I think I'm going to switch brushes. These I like the bristles on this brush a little bit better. There we go. I feel like that's smoothing that paint around a little bit better. But go ahead and smooth out this background. There we go. Yeah. All right. There we go. Yep. I'm already starting to like that. See, there we go. I'm going to blend this background out. Blend it, blend it, blend it. See? Patience. You wouldn't think it would take that much work just to paint a background, but it does. It does, it does, it does. And... I want this to have a nice smooth coat, but I'm not going to be too meticulous because I am going to do a good amount of flowers over top of it. And I'm not going to do clouds or anything like that because um, the flowers are going to be up close to you. So with that being said, I think I might be pretty much done with the background. I am going to add pretty much lull this brush out with some more water, start in the middle and kind of just blend it out a little bit more. I want it to be a little bit more gradation in the colors, especially right in here. There we go. <laughs> All right, so that's good. I'm not doing any more to the background. We're gonna leave it like that. That's nice. So we are gonna do some tulips over top of this. Now, like I said, painting a lot of times you have to do it with layers. You wanna be particular, especially when you kinda of wanna do um, something a little bit faster that's not going to take as many layers or as much time. So I'm going to use colors um, to do the flowers that would already blend really nicely with the blues in the background. That way I don't have to dry off the backgrounds. However, if I wanted to do colors such as yellow or orange or something like that, I would completely dry off the background first. 
because if you put yellow over top of blue and start trying to blend colors, it's just going to turn green. So with these blues, I'm thinking of doing the tulips in more of pink and purple tones. That way, if any of the background colors um, come through in the flowers, it will still blend and look nice together. So I'm going to pick up my paint brushes and I love a round brush. That is probably the brush I use the majority of the time. Um, it's called a round brush because it has a round or tapered edge. It does not have a straight line or a flat edge. I like this brush in particular because it makes it really easy to do curves and circles and things of that nature. Um, it's really hard to get curves with a straight brush. So something like flowers or something that has a lot of circular motions or curves, you're going to want to use a round tip brush. So I am going to start with a little bit of magenta, see, and I'm going to lighten it a little bit with some purple. I'm going to add a little bit more magenta, make that a little bit brighter. Let's see, there we go. And I am going to do, you see how that's already picking up that blue in the background, which is why I said I'm gonna use colors that kind of already blend. So I'm gonna make what it looks like some U shapes. <laughs> Cause these are going to be all kinds of lovely tulips Mind you, since we aren't sketching this out or anything like that, we're just going to plop the flowers where we kind of feel like we need to fill in some space. I want them to all be relatively the same size because they're all going to be up close in our view. So we want them to look like they're all at the same distance. Make sure I have some kind of everywhere and not just in any one particular spot, but other places too. Start kind of playing around with where you might would want some behind some of the other ones. And mind you, we're really just laying out some shapes right now. We're not really being too picky about any details we just want to lay out the shapes to know basically where we want our tulips to go and see i'm just doing kind of quick little strokes So see the areas where there's a lot of blue, I just want to add some more flowers in that area because you don't want a lot of negative space. And the areas where there's not a good amount of flowers, um, I'm going to go back and fill in with greenery too because we're going to have to do all the stems and the leaves and all that good stuff. So you still want to make sure um, that you, you have negative space but not too much negative space. You just like at the top, you want to be able to see the sky some, but then at the same time, like right here might be too much of an open space. Might add one right here too. There we go. Now, I I'm going to take this dark blue, which is a brilliant blue, and add a little bit of the purple and a little bit of red to it to make a really dark, almost navy blue, way darker than the blue that we used in the background. Now, the areas where certain flowers overlap over top of each other, I'm going to add um, some shadows to that so that they'll stand out some. So 
where some of these flowers naturally kind of hide behind each other, I'm going to just in certain areas, kind of around the edges where they overlap. Like how this one's hiding kind of behind this one. So on the side, I added some of that dark blue and then I'm kind of blending it out. So I want this one a little bit behind. So, and see, still quick, short little movements, nothing too precise not too difficult painting is a way more forgiving than um, drawing it's a lot quicker and to be honest it's just a lot easier seriously it really is especially when you learn a little bit of technique All right, okay, perfect. All right, so before we start to get all carried away with adding more and more colors to the flowers, basically I wanted to lay out the composition of just where I wanted the shapes of the flowers to be. Now I'm going to add some stems because of course they need stems. So I'm going to add the stems and go in and start outlining the greenery or the leaves and everything around. Goodness, I can't find the brush I want. Got it. All right. So I am going to make somewhat of a bright green just by using your typical base green, a little bit of yellow, some white. I might add a little bit of turquoise in there too, just to kind of give me a nice, more of a pastel green, but still kind of bright because of all the yellow in it. Ooh, yeah, I like that. All right, so this is a very fine brush because right now I just want to add some stems. It doesn't matter if you go over top of anything or anything right now we're kind of just going to play around with how we want the stems to go so i like to start within the middle of the canvas so and you kind of want your stems to make sense so i started this stem here there's a space right here so i brought it down so it would be a complete stem and try not to make them all going in the same direction. You know, in nature, they're not all straight. They kind of have curves and shapes and twists and things to them. So, like I said, I'm just kind of laying out where the stems are going to go. I know right now it just looks like lines and U-shapes, but it's going to come together. I promise. All right, perfect. I'm going to add just a little bit of some darker green to that lighter green shade that I used. And I think I might use some of this dark umber, this really dark brown too. Just to kind of darken up that green. And we're gonna kind of just play around and lay out where we might would want some leaves to come off of these lovely stems. Now, mind you, 
where we have all this negative space in between the flowers that we're going to add more stems and everything to. So basically all this space in the middle is mostly going to get covered up with flowers and leaves and all that good stuff. Which is why I said you don't need to be too super picky about the background because we're going to be doing a lot of, you know, painting and all that good stuff over top of it. And kind of just play around with it. One thing about painting is that it's very forgiving. So if you don't like something, wait a few minutes, especially with acrylic paint, um, allow it to dry, um, to dry, and then you can legitimately paint over top of it. So as of right now, I'm kind of liking that. So I'm going to leave that alone and I'm going to get my round brush again. And I'm going to add some more colors to these flowers here. So I want to brighten this up a good amount. So I'm going to make a really light pink. So I'm going to just use white, some brilliant red, a little bit of the magenta and that purple. Since we have a lot of purple kind of going on in here, I want to add those tones to it too. Actually going to add a little bit more purple to it. There we go. And this gives me kind of a nice, kind of almost like a lilac or mauve color. It's kind of in between a pink and a purple. So we're going to just do some nice strokes. And see, I kind of, when it comes to doing flowers, I like to add a little bit here and a little bit there. A little bit here and a little bit there. So if I'm going to add a little bit pink on this side of the flower, then I'm going to add some on the other side too. Not the exact same, but just to make sure that the colors or the flowers look uniform, look like they belong together. And see, I'm not doing it the exact same way on all of them, especially since they're overlapping and each other and all that good stuff. I'm just making sure I'm laying down some color. And right now, to be honest, I'm going back through and kind of, this is kind of helping in regards to having those flowers start to stand out more so from the canvas. So, all right. All right, and when it comes to these flowers, we're really just gonna have a lot of fun. We're gonna start adding some colors here and there and everywhere. And we're just gonna let the colors build up. And really, like I say, I kinda just keep playing around with it until I say I like it and then I'm gonna stop. So I'm using Brilliant Red, which is a really, really, really bright red. So, I want to use a little bit of red, but I'm going to deepen it by adding just a little teeny tiny bit of green to it. You can deepen your red with green. However, you do not want to add too much or it will turn brown. So I have a darker, a little bit of deeper red now, and I'm going to come in and just add some little touches here and there. And I'm kind of just playing around with it. I'm having throwing a little bit of color here, there, just kind of playing around with what I think looks good, no really rhyme or reason to it. I'm kind of just having fun. I'm really just layering the colors on, stepping back, seeing how it's coming together and going from there. 
yeah i'm liking the red though i like how that brightened it up some then i'm going to go back in with a little bit more magenta and see i kind of just keep playing around with it and you see how it's coming along it's starting to look more and more like actual flowers <laughs> But I kind of just keep playing around with that. I add a little bit of color here, a little bit of color there. Just go with what seems to work well together. And the most important thing is if you see, I'm doing the strokes and kind of upwards or curvature, uh, curvatures. That way, because flower petals are kind of delicate. They curve, they don't have straight lines. So I'm not just doing straight lines on the canvas. I'm doing curved lines. All right. So I am going to do a really bright version of this magenta too. Oh yeah, I like how that is adding with that red. And believe it or not, I'm still gonna go back in and add some blues to these and some deeper shades also, especially to go back in those areas where I add some of the shadows to where the flowers in the background stand out a little bit more okay now before i add anything else to the flowers i think i'm gonna start going in um some of these leaves and stems and all that good stuff now i'm going to use that same brush my favorite brush the round brush make sure it's nice and clean there's no color any other color in it and i'm going to start playing around with some of these greens so i still have that really bright green that i mixed up but I'm going to take just a little bit of the base green and a little bit of yellow and get a really bright green. And I'm just going to start laying out leaves. And see, I'm kind of just adding them here or there. I'm not being too particular about mixing any particular shade of green or anything like that because I want a good amount of color variation. So I'm just making sure I've got maybe some green, some yellow, on my my brush and i'm kind of just adding color here and there and everywhere I'm going to play around with adding and see I'm kind of just in areas where there's a lot of blue going in and making some kind of leaf shapes I'm kind of just 
stepping back to where I feel like there needs to be space filled in. Yeah, I felt like something needed to be right there. All right. I think I'm liking that. Now, the stems, see, now that I have some of the leaves and things going over top of those, I'm going to go back into the stems with a really, really dark green so that those stand out some. And I'm going to use a smaller brush, still a round brush, but just a smaller one. And I'm really just going to use a little bit of green and some brown. I might add a little bit of yellow if I made it too dark by putting too much brown in it but nope that's good so i just want to add some little touches of stem here and there i didn't want to cover them up completely And like I said, painting is very free, forgiving. So if you feel like you go over an area that you didn't want to or whatever, you can always go back after it dries a little bit and touch that spot up to wherever you wanted it to go. And see, a lot of times I have to take a step back and look and see. And all right, I'm starting to like that. So I'm going to go in on some of the leaves and I'm going to do some browns. Because I want those flowers to dry just a little bit more before I add some more color variations and all that good stuff into them. So I'm going to use some dark brown and a little bit of yellow and um, back to using my larger flat brush because I'm going to do this more so with the leaves. I'm only using my smaller brush on the stems. And speaking of that, see a spot that I want it cover up okay all right so see look we're doing pretty good we're only what 38 minutes into this painting and before you know it, it's going to be all together. So just on some of the edges of the flower, I mean, excuse me, of the leaves, I'm adding a little touch of brown here and there. Mind you, you don't want it to be the exact same for every single leaf or flower or anything like that. So... I'm not putting it on the same side for each little one or anything like that. Okay. go now wow that is still wet I am going to clean off my brush but I'm going to go in with just some yellow just plain yellow and start adding touches of yellow into some of those leaves because I'm going to layer in the color 
in these leaves just like we're doing for the flowers. because especially because the background is pretty dark that I want to brighten this up as much as I can and I want to have a good amount of definition when it comes to these leaves because we're going to do a lot of filling in still in those areas where there's a lot of blue still all right so I'm going to go back in with a little bit of the darker green and kind of just blend through the middle. See, kind of just blending the colors together. Not painting over the whole entire thing, but just adding a little touch of the darker green into it. You see how that starts to blend the colors. And by doing this, every single leaf, every single one should have different color variations, different strokes, different saturation. They all should be different. None of them should be the exact same. You see, I changed the little shape of that flower, but it's all good. Okay. Just randomly decided to put a little one right here. And this is more of a pastel green i believe this is the green that we first started with and i'm kind of like i said just playing around with where i feel like i could add some here some there i kind of just go with the flow so All right, so we're gonna leave the leaves and the stems alone for a little bit, and we're gonna go back to the flowers. So I'm going to clean my brush off really, really good. I know it probably sounds like I'm like slapping the paint brushes. I pretty much am. You wanna make sure you get all the paint out of them, especially when you're going from something like greens to going back into pinks and purples. You wanna make sure that your brush is nice and clean. So speaking of purples, I want to add a little bit of purple maybe more so of a burgundy because i'm gonna add a good amount of red into that purple to kind of deepen it up some oh yeah there we go I'm still doing those kind of curved shapes.
adding some reds and some burgundies. I'm just kind of playing around with it, playing around with it, adding some here, or there, wherever I feel like I need to add a different shade or tone so that one of the flowers stands out a little bit more. So still just kind of adding my kind of rule of thumb is when I go in and add dark, then I want to go back and add light over top of that. So I'm just coming in with a little bit of pink or a little bit of white and adding just little touches here or there. This flower right here needs some more color. Kind of still just playing around with it, adding color here, there. Yeah, I'm liking that. All right. I'm play around with these leaves some more. going back in and defining some of the stems all right and to be honest I think I want to start doing some highlighting and some shadowing and or some shading and i think we might be getting close to being about done we're not even an hour into it and i'm i'm pretty much liking it so i'm gonna make a little bit of some more of that dark blue that i originally started with oh i need to get some more red paint though here we go Come on, paint. There we go. Where is my round brush? There we go. All right. So I'm going to add some red into my brilliant blue to get a navy. And back in those areas again where they overlap. I'm going to make sure I'm going to go back in with the dark blue just so they still 
get that impression of being underneath or behind the other flowers. I'm still, I'm still not doing any straight lines. I'm still doing curved lines. to want to brighten it up just a little bit more just a little bit more so with the magenta I'm gonna add some more red into it to brighten it I'm not gonna add any pink I mean excuse me any white in it though because it will turn it into more of a pink All right, so I'm going to do what I said I was going to do and do some highlight highlights and all that good stuff and fill in the rest of the green and then we're going to leave it like that. So since this paint painting has larger strokes, we didn't really use a fine brush. Um, I'm still going to use that same round brush and do my highlights and all that good stuff um, with this brush. Now, I always say when it comes to doing your highlights and shadowing at the end, you definitely want to use your black last. So I like to go in and do my highlights with the white or whatever lighter shade I'm going to use first. And then I go back in and do black little touch-ups and then I'll go back in and fill in any spots where I feel like there needs to be whatever else there but I definitely need to get some more white paint I need to go and buy some more white paint because I'm pretty much out but hopefully I can get some paint out of here we'll see come on paint I knew I should have stopped and got paint before I started this today. There we go. I got it to work. That's all that matters. Okay. All right. Got what I needed. Now I can keep it moving. As much as I use this brush, you'd think it'd be easy for me to find it. But I don't know why I have all these other brushes in my cup when I'm not using them. But hey, it is what it is. So I've got the white paint and when it comes to doing my highlights and my shadowing, I kind of like to thin out my paint. So I like to add a little bit of water and I kind of twist into the paint like this. I call that loading the brush to where it almost gets like a fluid like texture. Now you don't want it too running. Like if you can do this and it starts dripping, then that's too much water. So, in little areas, kind of here and there, I'm going to add some touches. Of white. This helps to have the flowers stand out too. So 
I'm putting down some white. You take a step back. And I'm gonna go over that white with some of that magenta and brighten it up. Cause I still want these a little bit brighter. Yep, I like that. And see, I keep adding, I keep adding without completely covering up all the other layers that I already did. You want a layering effect. Especially with this type of technique, because I didn't do anything too, too realistic. I did more of an impressionist kind of style. So you want to see all those color variation and all those layers. All right, hmm. Let's work on some of these again. Now, I'm not going to use white for the leaves and all that, but I am gonna use a really pale green. to add highlights to the petals and all of that stuff. So here we go. See, still just layering the colors, giving it more texture, more definition, more movement, whatever you want to call it, all that beautiful stuff. And see, you need the layering and that color variation to get that technique. Now, with that same brush, with that pale green on it, I didn't clean off the brush at all. I'm adding yellow to it, and I'm going to go back in and add some more touches. I'm going to add a little bit more yellow to that, make it a little bit brighter. There we go. Then after I kind of go and brighten everything up, then I'm going to go back in with some of that brown and go back to some of these spots I want to be a little bit darker too. You need light. You need dark for the light to show up and you need light for the dark. They go hand in hand. You know, I'm liking that. Wait, let me step back from a second. I always have to do that. All right, so I'm going to go in with my black and I think that might be my last step. And I don't always just use plain black, but for this one, I am. And just like I did with the white, I'm going to kind of dilute the black with some water, kind of make it to a runny consistency. basically kind of using the black to kind of go on the sides not all the way around but just to differentiate 
the flowers by adding some black to them. Dilute my black just a little bit more. I know I start to get quiet when it starts to get down to the finishing line. I can see it approaching, so I start getting focused. All right, there's a few more things I want to do. I want to do a little bit more to the leaves. I'm liking the flowers. I think I'm going to leave them alone and add some more to the green. I ain't going to keep y'all that much longer, though. We almost done. We're almost done. I just feel like there needs to be more shadows in here as well. And let me dilute that brown some too. Let me water it down a little bit. Make it more like an ink kind of consistency. All right. You know, kind of just playing around with it. And sometimes, as you can see, even I, I have to keep stepping back, keep stepping back. Sometimes when you're right up close to it, it's, you need to take a step back to kind of see the whole composition. And I'm getting pretty happy with that. I said I wasn't going to add any white into the flowers, um, excuse me, into the leaves, but I think I am. I think I am going to add a little bit of white and black. But instead of using um, the larger round brush, I think I'm going to use one of my teeny tiny brushes. That way it won't be as dramatic of an impact. But I feel like it needs some, some more darkness to it. So I still want some of these stems to stand out. I don't want them to get lost, so we're going to darken those up. And I'm not just going down and doing the whole stem. I'm doing a little bit of black and a little bit of black here to kind of just darken it. See, I'm not just following the whole entire line and just adding a little touch here.
And some of the areas where I added some of the brown, I'm gonna still take that small brush and do some accents with the black. And then I'm gonna do some little touches with some whites. And I'm done. I'm not doing anything else after that. Let's see here. All right. I just added a little touch of green right there. So I felt like I added a little bit too much black. All right. And I'm not even going to. Well, no, I'll take that back. I am going to clean off my brush because I was using black. But I'm just going to go in with a little bit of white. On some of those. Leaves. And. Make sure I dilute it. There we go, Kiki. Like I said, the whole time, it's all about layering, 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 layering. Putting a little here, putting a little there. And I need to follow my own advice and stop when I'm getting happy with how it's looking. Hmm. Do I want to stop or do I want to add some more? You can always add more. That's the problem is knowing when to stop. Hmm. I think I like it. I think I'm going to leave it alone because if not, then the next thing I know it'd be another hour or another hour and a half and it will be a completely different painting. So we're going to leave it at that. So I hope that you guys enjoyed um, painting with me today. This was a very simple piece. It took us exactly an hour and eight minutes, maybe just an hour because I know I did a lot of talking. Either way, if you enjoyed yourself today and you would like to continue to come back and paint with me and learn new techniques and applications and all that good stuff, then make sure that you like, share, subscribe, and comment below. And I will see you guys next time. Bye!